What's up guys, this is Jay from JS Films. Christmas is only two days away and what better way to celebrate it than to buy you more sh for your camera. Now ever since I shot a video with this Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K about two months ago, I have gotten a lot of questions about it and of a lot of subscribers, like two more subscribers in my channel. So I know you guys want some more stuff about this. So today I'm gonna be talking about the Ursa Mini 4K and some of the accessories you will need to have it running, and maybe some extra ones as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that you're gonna need is power. I know the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is humongous, but it does not have built-in battery. So you will need to get a battery plate like this one, which is the Blackmagic V-mount battery plate for 80 bucks. It works for me, but it is the cheapest one out there. So if you're in a budget, go ahead and get this one. I've seen some pretty horrible reviews about it, but I went ahead and got it. So. Um, if you're using a V-mount battery plate, you will obviously need a V-mount battery. Now, this one is a Sw Switronics XBL90S. I've had this since like Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera days. It works just fine, and it works just like this. There. Now you have it powered up. Next thing that you're going to absolutely need is a CFast 2.0 card. I have the Transcend CFX650 128 gigabyte. It's 510 megabits per second read and 370 megabits per second write. Now, this is the cheapest CFast 2.0 card that can shoot raw up to 60 frames per second. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I'm pretty sure this is the cheapest one. Now, if you have a CFast 2.0 card, you will also need a CFast 2.0 reader and writer. Now this is a USB 3 SanDisk Extreme Pro CFast 2.0 reader and writer. It's pretty darn good and it's tiny, it's small, so it's really nice. It's also worth saying that the SanDisk Extreme Pro CFast 2.0 cards do not work with a Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K, so please know that. I'm pretty sure it is, but if I'm wrong, let me know again. But I know for a fact, December 23, 2015 today, it doesn't work with the Ursa Mini 4K, so just watch out. Transcend SanDisk. The next thing you're gonna absolutely need is obviously a lens. I have here the Canon version of the Sigma 18-35mm 1.8, the fastest zoom lens out there in the market. Now, the lens is only for APS-C sensors, but since the camera is super 35mm, it covers it pretty well. I don't see any vignetting at the 18 millimeter range. Now, just like I said, it's a super 35 millimeter sensor. So that means that you're gonna have to multiply the lens millimeter to 1.4. And that's 18. Hmm. Asians are really good at math. My ass. 18 times 1.4. So that's 25.2 millimeter and 35, 49 millimeter. So if you're using the Sigma 18 35 millimeter on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K, it's going to be 25 millimeter to like 49 millimeter focal length or field of view. Keep that in mind, okay? So if you want anything wider than that, make sure you're aware of that right there. Now, if you have a lens, you will also need some filters because the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K do not have built-in ND filters. So for that, I have the Hoya Pro ND, and I also have the Hoya UV and IR Cut 77 millimeter. So I have that combination. So I have the IR Cut to cut that stupid IR and then the Hoya uh, Pro ND right on top of that as well. I have the ND64 and the ND16. So it's a 1.2 stops and 1.8 stops. Okay, so as far as getting the camera running, that's pretty much it. The camera has built-in audio, but you can use a lav system like the Sennheiser EW100G3 and you can plug it in directly in the back of the camera. There's two XLR ports back here and also supports um, uh, phantom power. So that's a pretty cool feature there. If you wanna use like an NTG3 or whatever Sennheiser shotgun mic you wanna use, you can just plug it in there and it'll power it up. Pretty sweet deal. Now, 
It's a pretty sweet camera. The only thing that, well, the first thing that I kind of ran into is a stabilizer for it. I can't afford a Ronin. It's too expensive, even though that's like the cheapest uh, gimbal you can get out there. So what I did was I just bought a Lang PO4S stabilizer for like $280. Now at first I tested it out just like this, the battery, plate, lens, everything, and it supports it. It uses all the weights, but it supports it just fine. However, it's really freaking heavy. Unless you bench press like 800 pounds, you're not gonna be able to fly this thing all day. So what I did, or what I'm gonna do is just take the V-mount battery out and just, I don't know, put it somewhere and tether it via like a cable and plug it in the back and then put it on the stabilizer itself. Now to help with the weight, I actually bought a vest that will go along with this. I bought the KMTV vest that will go with the stabilizer and it works perfect. So that's an extra option there for stabilizing. All right guys, so just to do a quick recap, today we talked about the V-mount battery plate from Blackmagic, the V-mount battery from Switchronics, CFast 2.0 cards from Transcend, the reader and writer from SanDisk Extreme Pro, some microphones from Sennheiser Lavalier. We talked about the Sigma 1835 millimeter along with the Hoya Pro NDs and Hoya IR cuts. We talked about the stabilizer from Lang PO4S along with the KMTV vest that I'm using. We talked about this water right here from Culligan, this, this Logitech remote control for the TV. And also we talked about the DaVinci Resolve 12 Studio that's on sale right now for $500 USPS priority mail shipped. If you have verified PayPal in the United States, this is on sale and this is yours for $500. It came for you with the camera and I don't need it, so please take it. As always, thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Peace.